and we are live. So welcome everyone to the Chameleon of Worlds Totem Pole winner reveal. We have our three finalists here, Anthony, Asia, and Jules. Um, they have spent the last 39 days playing this game and defending their games to the jury. Uh, they've all played incredibly strong games, and we are excited for one of them to become the second winner of this series. We also have several awards that we are going to be giving out to a wide variety of people. Everything from biggest hero to player of the season to biggest rivalry to play uh, chameleon. Um, that's all coming after the winner reveal, so we are not going to let keep these people in suspense for too much longer. Um, we are going to just get right to the winner reveal. So, how it works in the totem pole is I will reveal the vote count, and then I will reveal the winner, and then I will reveal who voted for who. So, let me get to the voting chart real quick. All right, here's the moment. Um, good luck to all three of you. All three of you deserve this. All three of you have played great games, so. By a vote of five to three to one, congratulations. Anthony, you are the winner of Chameleon of Worlds, the totem pole. Anthony, you got votes from Dom, Laney, William, Lynn, Kaylee. Asia, you got votes from Wyatt, Megan, and Cindy, and Jules, you got a vote from Adam. So congratulations to all three of you. You all got votes. You all deserved votes. You all played amazing. Congratulations again, Anthony. Super good final three. Super good game. Very deserved. Very well earned. All right, if any of you want to say anything, I don't want to just like keep you Oh, okay, here. I don't know if I could say anything. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. should I, can I talk? Um, thank you to the jury. I was kind of not expecting this, um, but thank you to everyone who voted for me. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I am sitting next to my two favorite people in the world, um, besides Jared. But um, So I, I'm super, super happy, and I, I'm super grateful. I love this game. Oh, my God, I had a great time. Congrats, Anthony. Congrats. I'm sorry I like made like a gagging like face. I ate chapstick. <laughs> I ate chapstick by accident. <laughs> I literally saw that. I was like, oh my god. I was like, oh my god. It's okay. It's okay. We know Jules hates gay people. It's okay. <laughs> um, I think we're gonna need to play the YouTube video back and get that. Out. <laughs> Not live. <laughs> It's okay. She put it in her fan cam in her intro. This is public knowledge. All right. So we have 20 awards. Um, so first off, let's just get right into the other season awards. So first up, we have Jacob for the most robbed creature. Oh, hey. I couldn't find my unmute button. Okay, so first off, we have the most robbed pre-juror. This person just was taken out earlier than pretty much like anyone would have expected. Definitely someone that probably deserved to make it further, but just the circumstances of the game, just like things fell in place to where that didn't happen. So our most robbed pre-juror is Sam. So congrats, Sam. <laughs> Um, and on to our most robbed juror. Our most robbed juror didn't leave the game too long after Sam. Um, they were positioned really well in the first half of the game. Um, they were sort of set up between two sides, between the two sides that had formed, um, socially super integrated with everyone, and then a string of just unlucky circumstances happened back to back to back that got them eliminated. Um, and so that means our most robbed juror is Kaylee because she was operating on false information with the only twist that was not originally seen on the show being the round of her switch. And then um, 
votes thrown from people that she would not expect and no one would expect, plus an idol play. It took all of that to get her out, and she didn't really have much to go off of, so that's why Kaylee is our most robbed juror. Uh, next up, we have most heroic. So most heroic is me. Um, not I'm not the most heroic, but I'm presenting the most heroic. Um, so the most heroic award can be a bit tricky to define in games that are marked by chaos and deceit, which this one very much was. Um, but we wanted to grant this title to someone who had a history of being really sweet and kind and a history of bending over backwards for their allies in this game. This person had loyalty to those who were on their side and made moves that benefited their allies, even when those moves didn't always benefit themselves. Um, the house chat was also brightened every day as well with pictures of their lovely companion that they would so generously share with the house. So welcome to the Club of Chameleon of World Heroes, Lainey. And Frank. And biggest villain. Okay, excuse me for my printer in the background. I am a student. Um, and I actually wrote something out, so. <clears throat> the title of villain. Oh, wait, I didn't write this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> I read that, and I was like, I would never say that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Professional. Okay. The title of villain can always be a little hard to define, but in this person's case, they definitely played like a villain this season. They had no problem flipping their loyalties towards the beginning of the season and lying about it. They spilled secrets in order to advance their own game and overall played in a villainous way that was really exciting and, and interesting to watch. This person also had no problem making big, bold moves and calling people out when they heard their own name being talked about. One particular instance we remember is when this villain was on call with some other players. One person deafened and our villain decided to take the opportunity to suggest they vote that person out. Brutal. Congratulations to our biggest villain of the season, William. From one villain to another, I support you. All right, next is most impactful juror. That's me again, surprise. Okay, so I've written everything out because I can't think on my own. Excuse me, Anthony, I will take your win away. I don't know how, but I'll do it, bitch. I'm not afraid of you. Um, I came in 13th place and I'll still fight you. Um, okay, most impactful juror. So the most impactful juror has to be the person who contributed most to the strategic dialogue of the jury. Um, although this person found themselves at the center of some jury drama, which there was plenty of it, um, they also came to the jury roundtable and they brought a lot of really logical and important points to the jury's attention. Um, and they especially brought points that um, only they had because of their unique position in the game. And that is right, our most impactful juror is Dom. All right, speaking of jury drama, we have the biggest rivalry next. Yeah, so um, this rivalry definitely, although it, it like started in the game, I think it definitely carried into the jury. Even though there were rivalries in the game, I think the rivalry that took place during the jury, like the jury chat and everything like that, kind of like trumped everything else that took place in the game, which is um, Megan and Lynn. They definitely had like opposing thoughts in the jury and weren't afraid to uh, voice those thoughts to each other many times. <laughs> All right, next on the opposing end, we have best duo. Surprise, it's me again. Um, so for best duo, um, we wanted to recognize a runner up first because this was sort of a very close race. Um, so for our runners up, we had Megan and Lainey um, and they worked really closely together through almost the whole game. Um, and the thing that separated them from the pair that ended up getting this award is that 
Um, the duo that ended up winning, um, they really worked together throughout the whole game and they were very close um, and they made a lot of really pivotal moves together. Um, their loyalty never wavered and not once in the game did they turn on each other, even though it may have made both of their lives a whole lot easier if they had sold each other out. Um, this duo's loyalty even went all the way to the end as one of them on the jury voted for one of them as a finalist. So congratulations to our best duo, Dom and Anthony. Even though I hate giving Anthony an award. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So next up is Biggest Betrayal. And um, so I'm really glad Jared brought up Lainey and Megan because I'm just going to come right out and say it. And the biggest betrayal was when Lainey nominated Megan um, for the vote at the final seven. So Lainey betraying Megan. Um, they were a really tight duo throughout the first part of the game. Throughout most of the game, they were working together, vibing together. They were always like on call, having fun, just chilling out, strategically vibing. Um, and then Megan's top of the totem pole came and she um, flipped things up a little bit, but in her mind, it was not a strategic move directly against Lainey. It was just a move to better her game. She knew Lainey was gonna be fine for the round. She knew everything was gonna be okay. But then, a little bit later, Manny, Lainey directly targeted Megan, put her nominated against Jules, and even though Lainey voted to keep Megan in that vote, it's still the damage was done, and there was no repairing that bond, especially as Megan left immediately. All right, next up we have the biggest goat. Okay, so the biggest goat isn't necessarily a bad thing. Let me start by saying that. Um, it's definitely more of just how the other players perceived you and that they kind of saw you as someone that could just like be brought to the end and would be easy to beat. And definitely someone, even though other people think that, it doesn't mean that you didn't have the impact on the game that you did. So our, our biggest go is Lynn. <laughs> All right, next up we have the worst move. Um, so I talked about this a little bit earlier. First, I wanna give a runner up to the worst move. And that is William as the switch is our runner up for worst move in week three. Um, he went from a totally fine position in the game to one move putting uh, Jonah, switching Jonah and Anthony, and that completely tanked his game with half of the house. He was, from that point on, always in the bottom, a bunch of people's targets. He had flipped to the bottom of a tight four-person alliance. He was never really safe, but he managed to survive all the way up until the final eight. So just because it was a bad move, we're not going to give him the worst move because he did still manage to survive and cause quite a lot of damage in this game after that move. But our worst move of the game directly caused this person's elimination a few days later. So as I was saying in the Laney Betrays Megan, the worst move is Megan at her second top of the totem pole um, trying to flip the script and putting all of her allies in the bottom five as opposed to Dom and Anthony who she had been working, actively working against the entire rest of the game. Um, she put Laney she put Adam in the bottom five, both people who were working with her and working against Dom and Anthony, who were also working with her. It was a risk that she took, and if that risk had had paid off, it would have been a great move, but it had no it did not pay off as Lainey immediately, because of that, the next round put her up for one of the two people to be eliminated, so that is why we are giving the worst move to Megan's second top of the totem pole. All right, and next up we have the saddest elimination. Okay. <laughs> My printer just stopped, but it's gonna start again. So I have saddest elim. I wrote something again. Aren't I smart? Okay, so, sorry. Stop printing, okay. Um, it was a joy to watch this person play and a tragedy to see them go. 
We never like to see y'all leave, but this one stung in particular. Served a bad cocktail of circumstances. This person had a nice setup, but unfortunately was a victim to the placement of the bottom of the totem pole with no saves. This was after a questionable game of rock, paper, scissors, a plea for their life, and seven hours holding a book. They say fourth place is always the saddest elimination, and this was no exception. Our saddest elimination was Wyatt. We miss you. Wow. Not the rock, paper, scissors. I had to mention it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, you were wrong for them. <laughs> All right. Next up. I bet, Mon- I bet Monty was like so excited that we were doing that. It, like they were like, finally, like one of them's going to drop. And then I was like, mm, I'm not going to put my hand down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, thank God. But here we are. Um, next up, we have biggest underdog. All right. So our biggest underdog, we had a kind of a hard time deciding on this one because it was, this was a weird season. Like, I don't know if y'all realized from being inside the season how fucking weird this shit was, but y'all did that. Um, This was a very weird season. So um, it was really challenging to give out, given that the people who kind of looked like they were on the bottom really sort of ran things from day one. Um, And so this person who was our biggest underdog was the visible leader of their alliance and they found themselves in some controversy um, and they always pretty vocally opposed the minority. Um, and that minority, of course, was secretly somehow running things, um, which made them a pride target for the minority who really ran the game. Um, they were able to avoid a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, shots never really came their way, which uh, did or did not make sense. Um, and yeah, so our biggest underdog of the game is Wyatt. All right, next up we have the host's fave. Can y'all hear me? Okay, cool. Is it clear though? That's the question. Okay, hold on, give me a second. How about now? Yeah, that's better, unfortunately. Okay, host's fave. This one may be surprising to no one, but the reasoning is rock solid. There was only one person in this entire game who knew what the hosts were thinking without even asking. We would say something in our host chat, and this person would voice the same thought in their DR. It was a little uncanny, if you ask me. Additionally, they always did what we asked when we asked it, made several DRs, and was just a joy to host overall, and that is why our host favorite is Asia. Kisses. (laughs) Uh, Next up, we have Most Dedicated. Okay, Most Dedicated. Definitely one of my favorite awards to give out because I like as a host, it's really refreshing to see people put in effort to a game when you know there's not like you're not getting like a prize for winning or anything like you're just playing the game to have fun so seeing people um like do stuff like that and just really put their all into the game is really refreshing and in this game this person was super active not only in their dr but in the house chat in the house calls and even when they are voted out and in the jury chat so that is why we're giving our host favorite award to adam The amount of content that man produced. Wow. Um, Can I just say real quick that when he was trying to find that Switchback Award, Asia, I need you to know how much effort went into saving you weeks before it even became a thing. That man Snapchatted me for 10 hours straight, being like, what does this mean? What does this mean? I'd just be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Hours. Literally a whole Saturday from like 6 a.m. to like 10 p.m. He was like, what the fuck is this? And he was like, switch back. It's switch back. <laughs> it didn't and he it's finally because figured it out. I was so point, proud of him. At one point, it was three hours of thinking it was switch bank. And Adam would not let it go. Adam would not let switch bank go. It was so funny. It did not help that I made the puzzle while I was a little drunk. And things were a little out of place. So thank you, Adam. Um, and while we're on the 
topic of advantages. Everyone who wants to can at the role two in their host chat to find the last advantage because at equals two, at two, at the role that is just the number two. Some of you were so close. So, so close. close. All you had to do was at it. So I was so close. All you had to do was at it. I was so upset. All right. Um, I won't tell you what power that was because that would just add insult to injury. Anyways. Next up, we have most entertaining. Um, this was far and away an incredibly entertaining game. Everyone had unique personalities that they brought to the table for a super crazy dynamic. Things were popping off left and right. Like, there was no stop in this game. All of that mostly happened during the jury, though. And we, when we sit back and we think, okay, everyone was pretty, pretty entertaining during the jury but what made the pre-jury entertaining? And there is one person who carried the pre-jury entertainment on their back. Single-handedly, their back is aching from carrying that pre-jury drama, chaos, intrigue, entertainment, everything. And that person sadly did not make the jury, but their impact is still here. And that is why we are giving most entertaining to Henry. It should be no surprise from anyone that he made great DRs. His top of the totem pole was exciting. It was fresh. He, him calling out Sam was pure entertainment, pure chaos, pure drama. And we want nothing less from him. All right, so. King of the 13th place club. Mm -hmm. All right, so last up of our normal awards, we have most emotional. Here I am again, second season, presenting the most emotional, everybody's least favorite reward for the receiver. We do have a runner-up, though, surprisingly. So our runner-up is someone you all might think is the winner. This person openly cried on call multiple times and put their heart into everything they did. We love them so much. Our runner-up for most emotional player is Jules. <laughs> We love you, too. But you didn't win most emotional. You were just the runner-up. Okay. You're not getting so that here... two season in a row treatment. Mm -mm. Not yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So, for the, for the most emotional, we love this person so much, and they were a joy to host. Playing with your emotions isn't a bad thing, but sometimes people wear their heart on their sleeve extra blatantly. We always knew what this person was feeling and doing, which was much appreciated for the narrative of the game overall. From explanations about mazes, it really was top left to bottom right, to arguments in the jury, which did make good television, our most emotional player was the lovely Megan, who I want to reiterate that we love. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that is the end of our regular awards, but in Chameleon of Worlds, uh, we have the Big Five Awards, which is obviously the winner, um, and then the Quirky Award, the fan favorite, the player of the season, and the Chameleon. So we already know one of the Big Five Awards is Anthony um, for winning the game. So next, we will go to the Quirky TM Award. Also, Pippa. Hey, y'all! I wrote that out, too. If y'all don't think this person is quirky as hell, you're wrong. They were one of the most engaging people in this game, even though they met a premature end. They gave all the tea and more, and they absolutely ate up every opinion they had on the people left. Their pre-jury DR was probably the one that popped off the most. Out of everybody, they probably had the most messages. And overall, they're just a quirky sister, and that is why our Quirky award is going to Jonah. Yes, accuracy, we love it. All right, next up we have fan favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna say the, like the whole top three for fan favorite because it's so exciting. So. We have a tie for third, actually, for the fan favorite, which was a tie between Jules and Ben. So Ben did make the top three. Congratulations, Ben. We love you so much. 
Um, and then in second place, for fan favorite was Asia, which means the only person left is, of course, the winner of the fan favorite award, which was Jonah. So congratulations, Jonah, on being the fan favorite. <laughs> All right, and then we have the Chameleon Award. So the Chameleon Award is an award that is given out for someone who does things that are really only possible within the format that they have. So this is totem pole. So this is things like using the switch, um, defenders, tops of the totem poles. So we're really going to be looking at switches for this one because there's one person who actively made many, many conscious choices around the Switch, based their whole game around the Switch, um, and really at the end understood that Switch is everything once the saves are gone. And y'all used up your saves real early. So this person knew from that moment that Switch is everything. So they threatened people with the switch. Switch yourself out or you're going home. They made promises to try and earn themselves the switch the next round. It never worked, but they always were thinking, how do I get the switch? How do I get the switch to work for me? What happens with the switch? And the switch is something that only happens in the totem pole. So that is why we are giving the Chameleon Award to Asia for her constant thoughts about the switch, how to use the switch, how to maximize the switch, what to do with the Switch, and just really focusing on that in the second half of the game, which got her all the way to the finale. So congratulations, Asia. And last but not least, we have the player of the season. All right, so I want to start by saying that I am not qualified to give out the player of the season award because I ain't never been on that player of the season shit. Um, but what I will say I'm qualified for is hyping up this person's game because it was one of my favorite games that I've ever seen. And I think that they played um, just incredibly. And it blew my mind once I saw like what they were accomplishing. I was like, wow, they did that. Um, so this game was really rich with strategy. Um, and I think I'm going to speak for all of us as hosts. And I want to say thank you guys for all committing to the game like you did because I think it made for a really incredible and dynamic season. Um, that being said... Um, we really felt like this person played almost a perfect game. Um, they had an incredible amount of social and strategic clout, um, and they had information coming to them from like every side of the house just about at any given moment in the game. Um, and they got their way every single vote. Um, what's fascinating about this is that while they literally ran the game, um, they also somehow had the story of an underdog. Um, they were actively on the bottom for the whole game, and yet every single decision went exactly the way that they wanted it to. Um, so if they were one round away from making it to the end, um, this person would have gotten to the end have having like basically voted correctly every round um, and had this huge underdog story. And they, they basically ran the game in an incredible um, story. Like, I don't know, they just had everything. They had s social game, strategic game. Um, they had story. They had everything you could ask for. Um, so I'm going to say thank you, Dom, for being our player of the season. Um, and like I said, I'm a huge fan of your game. I think it was incredible to watch because, bitch, you made it work. You made it work. So congratulations, Dom. Yeah, so that is all of our awards. Congratulations to everyone who won an award. Uh, thank you to everyone else who played this season. Um, it's been... Season one was cute. Season one was cute, but this totem pole... Sorry, season one, Totem Pole, you blew, the, blew them out of the water. This was an absolutely amazing game to host. It was so fun to watch. Um, strong story, start, beginning, middle, and end. It was the complete package for a game. So I want to thank you guys all for making it so dynamic, so fun, so interesting, and so competitive all the way up until the very, 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 very end. So even though Totem Pole is done and we have a winner, we have... A third season starting soon so you guys have gotten a few little teasers um i want to hear from the finalists before we reveal officially what the theme is what their predictions are for the format so 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 i guess the mass singer <laughs> i think he's right um but on the off chance 
he isn't. Um, I don't know, Jules, do you know what it is? You, you think that Survivor. Way? Ah, Survivor, what? Is it Survivor? Yes. So, uh, Jules is right, we are how doing Survivor. How did you know that? Yeah, how did you guys know that? Um, how did you guys know? Yeah, so we are doing Survivor. Uh, Asia told me. And some trivia that we learned while coming up with that little promo is that the Destiny's Child song Survivor was actually inspired by the TV show um, and not just a coincidence. So fun little trivia for that right there. So everyone who has not played Chameleon of Worlds, um, please consider applying. We're planning on having a really good time. We've had two great seasons. We are planning on having a third great season. So if you guys want to get in on that, apply now. Um, apps will be open in just a moment once I finally, once I'm actually upload the application to Discord. But thank you again, all uh, Totem Pole players, Totem Pole viewers, everyone who's put any little bit of effort into this season, either from the VL or from in the game. It was a great season. We have a great winner. We have a great final three. We have a great jury. We have a great cast. We had a great season. Overall, it was amazing. So thank you all for making this such a great season. Um, a top tier season as someone who's hosted many, 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 many games. This was a top tier one. So thank you all. Hope to see you next season. And congratulations again, Anna.